Welcome to another episode of The Latest with Maya. Today, I am very excited to be having a conversation with writer, director, Peter Cannon. Thank you so much for being on my show. I'm very excited to be talking with you. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm so I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Um so my uh first question for you is um so I read uh that uh your new movie Exposure is your first feature film. Um and I I had the opportunity to watch it pre-release and I absolutely loved it. Oh, um you. yeah, where did the inspiration come from to make a movie about OCD and why did you decide on making it a thriller? So this what I'm about to say might um be kind of uh, obvious to a lot of folks that have OCD, but not very obvious to people that to people that don't. Um I'm someone that has dealt with OCD for over 10 years, maybe 12 years at this point. And uh, a lot of us that have OCD uh, will look at representations in media of what the experience is like. And that's not to say that the experiences we've seen on screen are wrong. They just, it, 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 feel like, it feels like to me, it misses a broader definition of what it is. Um, you'll see other movies like uh, As Good As It Gets with Jack Nicholson or Monk, or you'll see things that like have, you know, they'll treat it in kind of a lighter context. And that's not to say that, you know, I, I'm not one to say, I'm not a doctor. I'm not one to say that those iterations are wrong or incorrect or anything like that. But I personally experience obsessive compulsive disorder um, just as an assault on the mind. It's jam packed with anxiety and suspense and and um it's it's a waking nightmare to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. And it's uh it's really something that I feel like more people in the world could understand because a lot of people in the world have this. I think the most recent data from the National Institute for Mental Health says 1.2% of adults have OCD or have experienced OCD. And that's that's a lot for such a low amount of understanding. So um, I set out to kind of tell a story from for OCD from how I personally experience it, while also kind of working in other examples of themes of OCD with the general treatment for OCD, which we learn is exposure response prevention therapy uh, and other little nuances and things uh, from someone in our position uh, have to deal with that other people might not be aware of. Yeah, I um, uh, I've struggled with OCD for a, um, a large amount of my life, but I was just, um, I recently got like an official diagnosis a few months ago, and then I was finally a when I was in LA, I was talking with uh, two really good friends of mine about um, it. And it was like for the first time I was around people who actually got it and understood what it's like. And it was just so like emotional for me because I finally could feel like people were not looking at me like I'm strange for um things and it must have been validating you know it's yeah. um I I I got diagnosed pretty early I get earlier in my life so um and I got diagnosed high school and um so I imagine that the difference in experience is pretty big to be then diagnosed later in life after you spent like a, a few more years um you know existing through it and not knowing what's going on or not knowing for sure what's going on so yeah I mean it's I'm glad that I'm glad that you felt validated in that way thank you yeah it's yeah it's really nice to find people who like totally get it and yeah <laughs> 
uh, probably also because the people that don't have OCD won't, they'll, they'll conceptualize it, they'll understand the gravity, but they might not get it, get it. And the people I've come into contact with that have had OCD, there's like this unspoken understanding between us of just how deep it can get, you know, and I, I, I appreciate those moments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how do you keep yourself motivated to create even on days when you aren't fully feeling it? Um, that is a great question. I don't think I have not, I, 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 I hope yeah. this is, uh, it depends on what stage of something I'm working at because I struggle with motivation all the time in an earlier phase of something like if i'm just conceptualizing something like let's say a new story or a new script or like this new script that i'm writing right now um i feel as though that in the earlier stages i can get through the first draft based on the high and the excitement of this new idea you know yeah. and after that first draft the emotions completely change. <laughs> now it's like, oh my goodness, this is nowhere near good enough. I, I need to fix this before anyone else sees it. You know, it's it's a very big <laughs> yeah. shift. Um, but, you know, at the same time, I am trying to, um, I'm trying to manage a, a healthier way of looking at it because uh, throughout making this movie, a lot of my self-perception, self-identity was tied into making this thing as good as I could make it. But the reality is, as a filmmaker, you know, you're if you're going to do this your whole life, you you really need to be able to exist and be content with yourself outside of this stuff. And that's something I have yet to learn. I can, again, conceptualize it, understand the gravity of it, but I, I, I don't, I haven't totally wrapped my head around it yet, but I hope to soon. Yeah. Um... So what small things bring you joy on a daily basis? Oh, wow. These are good questions. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, number one, uh, I don't know if you hear snoring off camera, but this is my dog, Ellie. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> He's a little French bulldog. Um, uh, so uh, my my wife and my dog bring me little moments of joy and they get me through the day every day. Um, uh, let's see. Um, in the context of the work that, that I do, I think um, little moments of validation where we figure out whether it's a moment in writing or a moment in editing or um, like a moment on set, uh, of, of course, most of being a director is not being on set, but those moments where I am on set, figuring something out with just the 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 gears clicking into place and a moment working, that I find that so so cool and so validating and so um, you know it, it's like it's like a burst of energy or a burst of focus. Um, so that's that's in the context of work though. Outside, I guess I'm a big proponent of um, I, I I I really just love the people that are close to me like my wife and my dog and my my parents and my friends and um and and you know my family and extended family and I'm just uh I get a lot of joy from the people around me and uh you can tell I've been in therapy haven't you <laughs> you know I'm trying to 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 restructure uh the way I think about filmmaking you know yeah <laughs> well, I love that um so if you had to pick any character in a book, movie, or TV show who is most similar to you, oh, who geez. would you choose and why? Oh, man. It's, it's interesting because self-perception is really difficult because it'll never be an objective perspective. Which is, or, uh, which is why it's probably interesting to ask me the question, you know, because like, like, how do I see myself? You know, you're not asking anybody else. Yeah. Um, this is not, this might be a, a bit of a cheat of an answer, but there is a lot of me in the protagonist for exposure. Um, but that first off, obviously, uh, uh, secondly, I'm going to give you a better answer than that though. Um, 
Hmm. God, I don't know. There have been a lot of characters that I've really connected with. And you know what, actually? this Can I give you a really weird answer? Yes. Um, I love weird answers. So. <laughs> so one, I'm a big Batman guy. And one of the, the, the most recent Batman movie, the Matt Reeves one uh, with Robert Pattinson, make, makes the point that in throughout the, have you seen it first off? I haven't. It makes, I'm not going to give it really much away in terms of the plot, but it deals with the fact that wallowing in negativity and wallowing in, and being like kind of a, a force of destruction isn't really productive. And the way to really be a, a net positive in y yourself and in your world is to help other people. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, the, which which is great to see that from, you know, like, uh, like they, Batman has existed for so long that they're doing all kinds of stuff with that. Like they're, they're, there's this whole like reckoning with the character that's going on. But um, I just, I connected a lot with that, that version of Batman where, um, cause like I said, like what, what I'm going through right now, I, I feel like what it means to, to, to be a good person and have a net positive in society. And that's something that I really want to strive for because it's really easy to fall into a pit of um, negativity or self-centeredness, you know, and that's really with the time that we have on this earth, that's, not something that uh you know as as an adult that i i want to spend my r remaining years on earth being self-centered you know yeah yeah um so what lessons from your childhood have most impacted your world view wow these are these are big questions <laughs> um i think This is not necessarily childhood, but it is taking me from high school to college, where moving to a new area, seeing different walks of life, seeing people that are either that have had different experiences than you, just it's the understanding that your perspective in the world is not necessarily other people's perspective. And you really need to um, open your mind to, you know, like things that you may have thought were um, how, like the things like lessons or um, ideas you may have been taught growing up may not apply. Things that were deemed not OK are actually OK or the other way around. Things that are OK might not be OK. And it's um, I really think graduating high school and going to college and then to an extent graduating college and starting you know life in the real the more real world um i seeing other people's perspectives has really it, it, it it's it's you know it's it's really been a big turning point for me i would say cool yeah i love that um so what is your favorite movie soundtrack that would be The Social Network by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. Is that his name? I Atticus. have I'll, I yes. have never heard that soundtrack. So Oh my goodness. It is on Spotify. <laughs> it's like it's and it was around the time when um you know like I think Trent Reznor wasn't known. Well, he 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 was known for doing soundtracks at that time, but not, I think this is one of the movies that everyone was like, "What? This like the Nine Inch Nails guy does this?" You know, and uh, and then in retrospect, well, yeah, of course, like it's like you can hear his and uh, his, you know, his his skill all worked into it. And I'm not the biggest Nine Inch Nails person myself, but that soundtrack is something else, especially for that point in time. I think it you'll you'll hear a lot of like synth inspired soundtracks that came after it that take a lot of um take a lot of inspiration from the social network soundtrack oh cool 
cool. Yeah, I um I will look that up right after our interview and listen. Yeah, to it. please yeah. do. Yeah. Um. So, what three words best describe you? Oh God. Um. I don't know if you can still hear Ellie snoring, but uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> I I guess I can give this one to myself. I am tenacious. Um I let's see. I don't want to use the word obsessive because that's that's a cheat. Uh and that also kind of uh <laughs> falls into tenacious. Um <laughs> I guess um learning. Every year I I I, I learn just how much I don't know which is like a pretty common quote or or theme you know but uh like I I I I am often humbled by the amount of you know like of, of things I don't know and, and and life experiences and anyone that says they know everything about everything is just always so wrong um and then I don't know. Like, like uh, oftentimes, I always in in these kinds of questions, I feel the need to self deprecate a little bit. Uh, just you know, um, so I'll probably say something like um, ditzy, but uh, I think in reality, um, you know, I just I I feel, um, yeah, I would I would say a third word would probably be on edge. <laughs> if, if if I can give you a, two, a twofer, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, what is the best song to describe your life right now? Oh my goodness! The best song to describe my life. <sighs> um. I feel as though that with this movie and I cuz I'm I'm just I'm just in some independent filmmaker um but I'm 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 in such unfamiliar territory when it comes to like a lot of the stuff that 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 kind of comes with it um what was that talking head song where it goes uh how did I get here <laughs> <laughs> um yeah um yeah no it would be it would definitely be that talking head song um <laughs> once in a lifetime yep that's that's it that's the one. <laughs> oh, i love that <laughs> um so i am pop culture obsessed and i go in stages of shows that i cannot stop binge watching um, is there a show that you are currently obsessed with? I, this is very strange because like I, I've been trying to break this up with other shows because I, I'm on season nine of Adventure Time mm -hmm. and uh, I've been trying to break up the seasons with like, I'll watch a season of like The Bear and then I'll watch Adventure Time again and then I'll watch like that Tom Hiddleston, Hugh Laurie sh uh, miniseries from like 2016, what was it called? The Night Manager. Uh, and like, I'll watch this like really like mature spy thriller and then back to cartoons. <laughs> you know? um, yeah, uh, no. So that uh, I'm really into Adventure Time right now. I think that um, it's one of those shows that like, well, it, what's nice, first off, what's nice about a show that is, aimed at a younger audience is that like you can watch it when you're like feeling under the weather or when you're doing dishes or you know you can have it on in the background if if need be but at this also at the same time I just think the design choices are really cool I think the world building decisions are really cool I think what they decide to do with certain characters as the the years move on are really interesting I don't know if you've seen any of it Adventure Time I uh, haven't it's a it's 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 a lot it's a lot of it's a lot of cartoon and they, they even have a reboot of the show uh for like um other characters that's on hbo right now so they're they're still they're oh, still yeah. going you know uh but yeah no it's uh for someone that like spent the last four years working on a psychological thriller r-rated i just love adventure time you know yeah. oh cool yeah um yeah i uh 
right now um my mom and i are currently watching suits suits okay yeah and so i'm uh obsessed with that show right now and i'm i've also i've been going back and forth like through a couple shows a couple other shows so nice nice yeah i love finding new shows to binge watch so (laughs) Absolutely. Well, Suits, it's interesting. I haven't seen any Suits, but my wife's in law school right now. And so what I uh, what I've been interested in doing with her is watching legal dramas with her and seeing what her reaction is, you know, Um, like like we watched 12 Angry Men together. We watched um, uh, the trial, the Chicago seven that came out a few years ago, that Aaron Sorkin movie. Um, That's one of the things that actually inspired her to go to law school. So uh, it was a big moment for her. And I was just like, I just wanted to show you this Netflix movie. Um, (laughs) But uh, yeah, and then we also, we watched a bit of that show Goliath on Prime Video. So yeah, like we've been watching, uh, we've been going through a lot of legal dramas and that's what Suits is, right? Yes. Yeah, Yeah. it is. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm so interested in all that. So I love um, also watching the legal shows and in another world i would i've loved to go to law school and all that (laughs) well based on how busy my wife is right now it's uh it looks very intimidating (laughs) yeah i'm so proud of her though i'm so proud of every day she walks out the door and goes to school (laughs) that's amazing yeah um so if you had a warning label, uh, what would yours say? Warning, this guy's a moron. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, uh, like, I, I, there is, I am good at some things, but there's a lot of real world things that I'm just still so painfully inept at. Uh, directions is one of them. It is laughable. You th- And that, that sounds like a, like a harmless thing, but after walking our dog enough times in the neighborhood I still don't quite know how to get home my wife's looking at me like are you serious <laughs> you know <laughs> um you know like my but also warning gets sick at the drop of a hat that's happened so many times including right now right before most of the time right before I need to do something important with my life you know (laughs) so yeah no this is I I'm I I sure hope this writing directing thing works out because uh you know (laughs) I I, I'm I'm not sure if I'm literally physically equipped to do any of the more useful jobs (laughs) yeah well I think uh writing and directing is a very useful job so (laughs) if people you know if if, if that's for that's for the viewers to decide yeah (laughs) um so if you could eliminate one thing from your daily schedule what would it be and why is it cheating to say OCD (laughs) no it would then it would be that like far and away but that's kind of the obvious answer um i would say from my schedule well the real answer is ocd but the the fun answer is folding laundry it's really easy to throw stuff into a machine but then to handle each piece of clothes and make sure it fits neatly back to where it was only to get pulled out again yeah. such a time sink <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's that's our fun cutesy answer <laughs> i like it yeah 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 <laughs> um so i love inspiring and motivational quotes and this week my favorite quotation is by oprah winfrey and okay. it says you do div- you define your own life don't let other people write your script um is there a quotation that has inspired you lately yes but before i say it i want to say that i really connect with that quote quite a bit i i really i wish i could take that one into into mind i I, i'm very i can i'm known for being a little insecure uh, or very insecure and uh i wish i could kind of have that more as a second nature as I as as I go on in life. Who knows? Maybe I will. Yeah. Um, this this quote that I've really connected with, and I know that um, history is not uh, 
looked it, it, in some circles history has not looked super kindly on Winston Churchill but uh there is a Winston Churchill quote that um that honestly it may it may be one of those fake internet Winston Churchill quotes let me let me make just give me one second I'm gonna Winston Churchill because <laughs> there's so many Winston Churchill quotes that aren't actually Winston Churchill quotes uh yeah. enemies quote okay yes it's a real one uh so this quote goes you have enemies good that means you've stood up for something sometime in your life and basically it just means that like having presence and having like a spine and standing up for yourself might irk people or might put you on the wrong side of people and uh you're going to experience headwinds moving in any direction you go and um that is not it is it is more important for you to get to where you need to go than to maintain perfect relationships with everybody yeah oh i love that yeah yeah uh, jur jury's out on if winston churchill was good or not but <laughs> uh, but but <laughs> yeah. i like that quote a lot you know yeah yeah i love that quote uh i've never heard that one so well he's got a million of them and most of them are pretty mean but that one's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um you know well uh that was my final question for you and I just again want to say thank you so much for joining me it has been so much fun talking with you and I just really appreciate you taking the time so thank you thanks for taking the time to have me on I'm 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 so happy I'm also feeling better now <laughs> I just talking to talking to somebody and not just sitting in bed sorry my bed guys it's been under the weather um but yeah I just I appreciate so much you having me on the show it's been a blast and uh I you you came up with some great questions oh thank you thank you um yeah, I hope you have uh, a great rest of your day and feel better. Um, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's a wrap on today's edition of The Latest with Maya. Woo! <laughs>